Hi everybody and welcome to this new video. So today's video is not a tutorial, but it's more like a walkthrough uh, video where I'm going to show you in my After Effects project how I made this uh, dog run cycle. So if I go here in the main composition, you will find the design of my character and its animation. And the way I did that is only using shape layers. And I did not use any rig from the Duik toolset or the Puppet tool in After Effects. All I did is placing keyframes for the shapes and the position and rotation properties. But first, let me show you how I designed uh, this dog. So basically, I started with a very rough sketch I made in Photoshop. And this sketch was basically my reference uh, to use my pen tool in After Effects. Now the next step for me is to decompose all the stages of the animation of the dog. I'm gonna deactivate here all these layers uh, to focus only on these two legs that are in front uh, of our design. If I hit play now, you can see four different poses uh, for my animation. And the way I like to create those poses is just by going into the properties of my layer and by selecting and right-clicking on all the keyframes, I choose the toggle hold keyframe option. This way you don't have any interpolations between your keyframes and this allows you to uh, check your poses and to work on them and their timing. So the way I figured out these four poses is by starting here with this leg hitting the floor. And just after the leg hits the floor, what happens is that the body will usually go up. So the body goes up, here you have this leg that is now bending, and the front leg here is completely straight, ready to hit the floor now uh, in the third frame. So this leg now hits the floor on the third frame, and this leg starts to go here in front, ready to hit the floor again. But just after that, we have uh, again the body going up. This leg is straight and now hits the floor again. And this is kind of a fifth pose, which is actually the first pose. And that's how uh, you create a seamless loop. So let me show you again. One, first pose, two, three, and four, and back to one. So once you get uh, this cycle, you can just uh, simply copy and paste the legs that are behind the design of your four-legged character. And what you want to do is simply offset uh, the animation of the legs on the other side of the body. Because the way a four-legged character moves is by having always two legs touching the floor. So when the front leg on one side touched the floor, the back leg on the other side touches the floor as well. All right, so I know it might not be easy, so let me show you again what it looks like. And here is a slow motion version of my animation, so you can see maybe a little better how all the legs work all together. And here is how it looks like when you add the head and the tail. So when it comes to the other parts of the body, uh, the head is perfectly aligned here in my design and I created this ellipse in my shapes and basically I used the center of the ellipse uh, for my anchor point for the layer that contains the head and you can see the head is moving with a little offset uh, as well as the tail and the ears and that's the way you create more lively animations and the reason why you want to create this offset on the animation of the other parts of the body like the head and the tail uh, it's because uh, these parts are moving as a consequence of the main motion. As the body goes up and down, the head is going to move with a little offset. Now let's go back to the main uh, composition here. Okay, so now let's have a closer look uh, at the head and here the animation uh, of the tongue. So again, I'm following the same rule, um, making the animation with a little offset from the main motion to make it more lively. So I have multiple groups and uh, you should really uh, think to rename all the groups. Inside each groups, I have uh, different properties and here I animated uh, the path property of my shape and in each group comes uh, transform properties and inside the transform properties of this group I animated the rotation so 
Uh, what is really cool when you have multiple groups in one shape layer is that for each group uh, you can uh, move the anchor point. So here I just use the pan behind tool or Y on your keyboard and I can come here and click on the anchor point of my group and move it around. So now this way when I'm going to come down and animate the rotation property of this group, only this group will rotate around this anchor point in my shape layer. So that's very uh, powerful to animate uh, shape layers in After Effects. And here I just animated the shape of the tongue to make it bend along with the rotation. So the shapes in After Effects are not as manageable as in Illustrator when it comes to design, but for the animation, the capacity to have different groups inside uh, only one layer uh, enables you to have better control over all the shapes and maintain all the parts uh, of my character on one single layer each time. That's how you can keep your compositions really clean. Now I want to show you how I achieved this look with this uh, white part on the belly of my character. And basically I managed to do this with two different groups. The group I named Phil is just basically uh, the main shape of the body. And here on this group on top of it, I just duplicated this shape, which I renamed here the body path. And I created a second shape uh, that I named the belly path. Um, and this second shape uh, is right here. And I managed to constrain this shape inside the main shape of the body. So the way I achieved that is by going here in this menu, uh, in the add button here and select merge path option. And once you get the merge path option here in your group, it will come by default on the add mode. So when you're on add mode, what happens is just that you have both your shapes uh, all together. So that's not what we want here. So I go here and click on intersect and we only have the part of the two shapes that intersect with each other. If you click on subtract, here you will see that this shape is subtracted from this second shape. And you can note here that if you change the order of your shapes in your group, it will uh, change the order in which um, these shapes are subtracted to each other. Uh, so here for this design, I went with the intersect mode. So that's how I achieved uh, this design with minimum amount of layers in my composition. Now let's go to the main composition with the background. So here it's just basically a blue uh, solid, here a yellow solid for the floor, and here I have another shape layer for the dog shadow, of course the dog himself, and in between here I have these uh, three plants uh, that I used to create some depth and movement in the background of my scene. So basically those three plants are just three times the same layer. It's the same group I duplicated and it's basically uh, made of one ellipse and on top of it a second group with a bunch of shapes I designed with uh, the pen tool on which I applied a stroke. Now here to create the motion in my background, I simply used uh, keyframes on the position property. Here you can see my X position and Y position are separated from each other. The way to achieve that is by going on the position property, do a right click and choose separate dimensions. And in this case, because my Y position doesn't change, uh, I want to delete the keyframes of the Y position. So by separating dimensions, I can control only the X position property. For the shadow of the dog, I used the rounded rectangle tool. This way I created a new shape layer and I unlocked the scale properties to animate only the X value of the scale. And my keyframes here are perfectly matching the cycle of my character. This way I can keep a seamless loop and you can tell by the red color of my values that there is an expression on those keyframes. And the reason is because I used the rigging panel of the Duic Basel script and under the automation menu, I used the looper option. When you click on the looper option, Duic places this expression here in the properties and an effect 
that allows you to have control on the loop expression that you just placed on your keyframes. This way your animation will loop endlessly. And this is another very convenient tool uh, offered by the Duix script. Now I will show you another way to do it. I will delete the expression here. And basically what we want to do uh, is just a loop out uh, expression. So I remove the effect. I will do alt click on the stopwatch or option click if you're on a Mac. And that brings the expression editor. And I will click on this little arrow here to have the expression menu. And under the properties here at the bottom, I will just select the loop out expression. And when I click on the loop out expression, it's placed here automatically by After Effects. And now when I play my animation, it's looping endlessly too. So that's another simple way to do it if you don't have the Duik Basel installed uh, on your machine. Alright, so that's it for today. I hope uh, you learned a bunch of things here. Um, if you want to know more about the character animation, I highly recommend you start with uh, the book of Richard Williams named the Animator's Survival Kit. That's the Bible of all animators on Earth right now. I will put a link in the description of this video. I will also put a link to the Duik Basel script and a link to several tutorials that I watched myself uh, to progress as an animator and After Effects. Also, feel free to check the other videos I did so far on this channel and also check the link to my website and to my Spreadshop if you want to support me. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment what you would like to see next and I wish you a great day and see you next time.